We are now joined by Robin Schutz with Livingston Educational Service Agency. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here, Janelle. Yeah, we're excited to have you on today because um, as we've been talking um, about childcare and a bunch of different other kind of issues that we're facing as we've come out of COVID, but even prior, um, this has been something that's been, um, you know, more awareness has kind of uh, gained a little bit more traction and, and things around this. So I'm excited to have you on today and I don't want to spoil too much before I give you the opportunity to introduce yourself and share a little bit about what you do. Yes, okay, thank you. Yes, my name is Robin Schutz and I am the coordinator for Great Start Livingston. I've been in that role for a little over 10 years and it's just been an amazing opportunity to connect with our community partners and children and families in our county. So um, for those that are listening that may not know, what is Great Start Livingston? Yes, Great Start Livingston, uh, and it makes it kind of tricky. We're not a program, we are an early childhood community building group. Um, so our purpose is to bring together community partners and uh, to be able to support children and families. So by building these community connections, um, we, can, we can do things that will uh, engage our children and families so that they can support their development. Um, the collaborative is a part of it. That's the connector with our community partners. And community partners can be the libraries, the health and medical community, the school districts, there's just so many people who can be a part of this work. And we can build on existing practices and just being able to support the children and families with their development. Yeah, and I do think that that um, is really interesting, especially as we're kind of navigating today's challenges and what that means to um, families who have two parents that work or um, maybe um, parents that can't afford childcare or um, some of these different things, but also developmentally um, that they have a resource to go to to understand um, their child as they grow and develop and learn. And I love the idea that you're bringing the, this collaborative together to create that, that community feel and, and touch. So um, thank you for sharing a little bit about what, what it is you guys do. Um, and I'm hoping that now you can provide some examples. Sure, yes, yes. Um, so with the community partners, we, <clears throat> excuse me, we may look at some data, um, some, we may talk to some parents and what the need is out there, and then we will address that. So we have many parents who are seeking more information. So we will have some parent workshops. We may offer play dates, which will connect with some literacy topics or even some social emotional topics. We also have worked on transition to kindergarten and with the school districts and with the early childhood providers to complete a transition form. So when a child transitions into kindergarten, there's some information that can travel over to help support that enrollment into the next step. So, so what, what you're talking about, you know, kind of what age do you get like to get families involved? When does that start? When do you like to see ideally um, these people reach out for, you know, maybe data or, um, you know, play dates or some of these um, groups mm -hmm. or things that you're talking about? Yes. Um, through our funding, we're, we're supporting basically the zero to eight year old range. Ideally, the sooner I can reach parents, the better. Um, the more they can have that connection earlier of what resources are, I, I feel that that helps support that development. So when you say zero, what is that? Uh, zero, um, ideally prenatally. So even during that pregnancy time or even right before that time, and, and that's kind of that tight window. Um, but you know, if you start getting those resources then and the, they can help support that prenatal time so they have a healthy pregnancy and then healthy childhood. Absolutely. Now, are you, do you um, get that information out by working with um, like local partners like doctor's offices, um, different things like that? We have been trying to connect more and more with the doctor's offices um, to get that connection. Um, another area that we're looking into that I would like to connect with are employers. Um, families can be in the workplace during that pre prenatal time and maybe the employers can be a convener for us. They can connect with families and just start sharing that information so that they, so they're already aware oh, I'm in Livingston County, I can go to Great Start Livingston website and, and find resources, prenatal, pregnancy, and beyond. Absolutely, I love that idea. And I think one of the things that you know we're also focused on a lot today is just kind of that workforce retention. And I think you know from an employer, employee perspective, it really shows a lot of interest and care if, if um, your employer 
employer is supporting you through that process and, and able to offer different resources such as yourself. Yes, yes, I, we see that as a benefit for the employer and for the employee. Um, you know, if they could share information also about childcare, because we know there's some difficult situations in childcare right now, maybe we can partner with employers to address that capacity and even the cost concern. Um, locally, we do have a scholarship program to help with childcare. Uh, we're also trying to dig a little deeper to see what we can do to help with that capacity. Uh, but yes, go ahead. Absolutely, no, no, I think you're absolutely right and, and touching on great um, issues and concerns. And um, one that kind of leads us into our next talking point is just, you know, kind of addressing these emergent issues and concerns right here in our community. And what does that look like? And, you know, as a chamber, we're always happy to help be that vehicle to connect with employers and businesses in the community. So I'm so happy to have you on today. To yes. These. Oh, me too. I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying to build this connection in this area um, because we can see they're, they're, the issues are some of their bigger issues and it's not just one person or one agency who can tackle that. So if we have the ability to bring in more partners to look at it from different angles and different resources, hopefully we can be able to address things like childcare capacity or being able to support parents during that transition back into work time and what that might look like. Yeah, absolutely. I know that one of the things that um, throughout the pandemic that we've struggled with is re-engaging women in the workforce mm -hmm. and a lot of it is revolved around child care. Um, one, the growing expense and again capacity. Now, um, can you share some different statistics with us on, you know, what, what show, kind of how many children are in the region um, that are kind of within this threshold mm -hmm. and um, is there truly a lack of capacity? Well, we, when we look at data, we have just about, um, just under 12,000 children ages zero to five in our county. And then we look at the capacity for childcare, which can serve children past the age of five, it's just over 6,000. So there is a gap in spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, you know, not every child needs childcare, but a lot do. And we, we're hearing more and more from families who are experiencing wait lists and trying to find that childcare. Yeah, personally, I was on one for over a year. Yeah. <laughs> so and, it's right. crazy. And, so and, and you're it's, not thinking about it when you're you're when you're pregnant or you're kind of going through and navigating mm -hmm. this, this transition into your next chapter. Um, it's kind of one of those last things that comes to mind that you just don't really. It really hasn't been um, a huge issue in the past to, to this extent where it's a year wait long list. Right, right. And we, in addition to having capacity, we want to make sure it's quality capacity. Mm -hmm. So we're working with partners like Child Care Network who have that pulse of the early childhood providers and being able to support them if somebody wants to become an early childhood provider and looking at it like a small business and, you know, what can we do to support them to become a small business and how they can be able to provide that space for families. So through that network, you are you able to provide different training to credential individuals? Yes, yes. There, We have um, some funding through our local United Way, and it's being used to provide a child development associate, so a credentialing program for early childhood providers. Ideally, that'll increase capacity by providing um, more people with that kind of baseline uh, credential for their employment. Awesome. So, so you work with them and they're one of your partners. Who are some of your other partners that you bring to the table or you bring to the table? Yes, um, some of our other par uh, partners have included the health department, uh, community mental health, the local libraries have been amazing being able to connect with families, the school districts. Um, that's just to like, name a few. I know there are some more out there and we have early childhood providers and parents. The parent voice is huge so we're always trying to reach out to parents. Um, yes, we want to provide them with supports, but we also want them at the table and they come to the table and they share their experiences and then we can take that information and be able to like, okay, how can we support this so that we can build this to be a better system for our families. That's amazing. How many um, families would you say are kind of actively engaged in, in supporting and being a part of that conversation? Um, right now, like our tight group might be more like 12 to 15, but we do have many, many more who are in, involved with, like through us more um, electronically yep. and being able to share things that way. Um, we did have some transition with the shutdown, and but we're now going back to in-person mm -hmm. and, and being able to help with those barriers. Uh, we provide dinner and childcare for our evening meetings and workshops, so it just gives 
it just helps parents. You don't have to worry about that. Like, just come. We want you to be here. We want you to get the information, and we want to get information from them. Fantastic. So um, I also know that you guys um, have a new um, welcome baby bag. So I wanted to give you an opportunity yeah. to touch on that a little bit today. Yes. Um, so we're working on a new structure just to make things easier for parents for those connection points where there's sort of, you know, each year the families would receive information to support their child's development. The first one being the welcome baby bag. So when a parent is pregnant or newborn, they would receive this welcome baby bag and be connected into our system to get information. And it has things in there. It, um, safe sleep related so there's a safe sleep sack there are some books so we can encourage talking is teaching and the the talk sing and read components of the child's development um, and we have a contents card so it's not just oh there's a rattle in there we have information on how you can use that to help track side to side so parents are learning about their child's development and how important that is for their development it's amazing. Um, I love this. I love that this is all coming in the bag. Now, how, how would somebody get access to one of these yes. bags? Or how do you get somebody looped into that? Because we talked about referrals and all of those different things, mm -hmm. too. Right now, it's going to be a soft la launch where we have a couple partners who we're training to be able to distribute those bags. Um, but look for us soon uh, within this next year where we want to be able to expand this, where uh, whether a doctor's office or library would have a poster, you would scan a QR code, they could go register on our computer or online and be able to have a bag, uh, they would find the pickup points to be able to access that bag. Awesome, and is that something that we could work with employers on Oh, as well? yes, okay. an employer could have bags on hand and if they know they Perfect. have some employees who are pregnant um, or newborn baby, they can provide that bag to them also. Awesome. Now, um, where else can parents access early childhood resources? Yes, uh, on our website. Uh, we know there's not, there's so much information out there. It's kind of an overload for parents and we're trying to provide a central place for parents to go to. So if you check out our website, Great Start Livingston, um, that provides a, a place for resources and we try to have local resources in there and then some national as well, but we try to keep it as local as possible. You can find out your school district, you can find out about preschool, you can find out about a breastfeeding class. Um, just to poke around in that website, you can use the search button as well. Awesome. Um, that's so exciting. Now, I know that you guys also have the Great Start Parent Coalition. Um, and that is uh, for all of families in Livingston County. And um, I'm gonna let you wrap up with your contact information. So if anybody wants to learn about that and any of the programs we've talked about today, they can reach you directly. Yes, yes. Great, you can, um, you can access me through the greatstartlivingston.org website and um, contact me. You can do the contact page there. And that's a great place to just get that initial information. Wonderful, and um, what, do you know the website offhand? It's Great Start Livingston. Oh, that's it. Okay. GreatStartLivingston.org. Yes. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, Robin, thank you so much for coming on today, for sharing this information. Uh, of course, like I said, we would want to continue to get that word out, and um, we look forward to all the great things to come. All right. Thank you so much, Janelle.